Hey, so I pulled out my Nintendo as I'm currently working on a project that uses chip tunes. Now, if you grew up along the same time I did, this was really the hip bomb. We had Mario and all those fun old games with all those really cool songs. And yeah, this is really where I started my music. I used to program the cartridges to make my tracks and play them on stage. And yeah, this has grown for me to get all these different machines. So bring it full circle, I thought I'll pull out my Micro Freak and see how I can make some of those songs or tones and see how we can replicate that on here. So here's what my music NES. Now it's got a few mods in here, but I thought I'd show you where the magic happened. This is currently a little project I'm working on, but if we remove this piece here, So here is the little culprit that does a lot of stuff for us. Now this is a 2A07 as I live in Australia and that's the power version. However this is the 8-bit microprocessor and inside there as well is our sound chip which allows us to do two square channels, one triangle channel, one noise channel and a sample based channel and yeah really tweaking this we can get a lot of really cool sounds out of it. So. Let's see how we can apply them onto the Micro Freak. So I've got my Micro Freak in front of me and I wanted to go through each of the different channels and how we can sort of replicate that sound. Now back in the day these came from really old games and a couple of my favourites but it could be really simple as or can be quite complex. Now let's start with using the square channel first. Now you probably heard with those first two examples that they're quite simple. Here's another one that has a pretty good uh, simple square wave startup. So let's start with making the square wave itself. Now we're going to start with the oscillator and we're going to go to basic waves and turn everything right down to the lowest point and that'll give us our 50% square wave which is now when we are dealing with chip tunes on the Nintendo we really only have three modes of pulse width modulation. So we have our 50 and then we have our 25 and then we have our 12.5 and these are just the percentages of that waveform being manipulated. So we can only really work in that realm but we can get really complex. There's no filter on the NES so we won't worry about that. Each channel is monophonic and we only have five channels, so two poles. So we'll just leave it in mono mode. Next we're going to do the envelope. Now on the NES we did have a wave table where we could draw out the envelope of the waveform that we wanted. And we could set loop points as well. However, we're just going to use the envelope here on this one. And we could like make really plucky sound. Or we can actually extend them out and create some bit more pad light sounds. So I'm going to set up a pitch mod straight away and I'm going to use the cycle envelope for that. So I'm just going to set it to the cycle envelope and then I'm going to create a really simple envelope where it ramps the pitch in. So I've got like a very basic uh, AD envelope and then I'm going to give it And then, yeah, you probably heard. But I wanted to ramp in, so I'm going to go the other way. Probably a bit less. Cool. Another effect we can do is called a hardware sweep, which we can just run across the keyboard like that which you probably heard that effect used quite a lot in old NES games. Next I'm going to modulate the pulse width on this machine. So I'm going to use the LFO and I'm going to set it to a square wave and preset somewhere about there just for now. And I'm going to use the LFO to change the timbre, which is the pulse width modulation. Now, as I said before, there's only three levels of pulse width and currently I've got a 25% square wave. So what I want to make it do is jump down to the 50%, so I need to take off 25%. So 
which I can do like that. And bringing all these bits together, I've got my lead patch. Now I wanted to finish off talking about arpeggios because we did have a command for that when we were making our chip tunes and it allowed us to play more complex chord as an arpeggiator. Now in a single channel we can do this by using the arpeggio on microfreak and then just making sure we extend the gate right out and that gives us this sort of sound. Next I wanted to talk a bit about how we can use the triangle wave because it's quite limited how we can pull out a lot of cool sounds but in a lot of music it gets used as a sort of bass tone. How can we set one of these up? Now I've got an initialized patch and I found a couple of different ways but I feel they're both kind of close so Take it with a grain of salt, however the first way we can set one of these up is using the super saw. We can set it to the triangle and then we make sure that both detune and volume's down so that gives us this sort of sound. Cool. And the other way I've found we can get more of a, that distorted triangle wave sound is we can use the wave table and go to 15 and make sure all the other positions are off and that will give us this sound which I feel is a little bit closer to that sort of stepped volume of the triangle wave and talking about volume how they actually made the triangle wave was um, using the volume command to draw out the triangle wave so we actually lose out on volume or any sort of control on the envelope so we really just have this sort of on off so this sound usually tends well for making some really cool like bass sounds. So. And then sometimes you'll usually see it could be used as some sort of like flute sound. And if we start doing what we're doing, making some vibrato, uh, we'll go to the LFO and pitch, we'll give it a tiny bit. And we'll use a triangle wave because sine waves are really hard to draw out in math and probably would have taken up a lot of space on the net. So we get this sort of... Some tricks that we can do because we are dealing with monophonic channels is we can sort of flip between instruments and have one as like the bass sound if we just and then we can create a second one that is like a drum sound so let's make a synthesized triangle wave drum now I'm going to go to the pitch on the envelope because now that we have access to just the envelope itself and I'm just going to make a basic ramp down like that and then I'm going to use that envelope here and then I'm going to give it I want it to be quiet like that and then we're going to turn it down till we get that sort of pluck and we can ramp it up a bit more And that gives us that drum and then what we could do is flick between the two saying um, we could cycle between having that sound and then we can take away the envelope and then have like the normal bass sound so we can create a full groove within just the triangle wave like it is. Next, how we can replicate the noise channel. Now the noise channel was really used for like percussive sounds or some sort of swells in that similar to... Now to make that sort of drum percussion we're going to use the new noise oscillator so you will need to get the uh, updated version and we're going to turn off balance so we've just got the noise 
I'm going to start scrolling that down. Yeah, so this what really sold me on the new Oscillator was how much it sounded like the noise on the NES. So what I want to do is match this to the actual keyboard itself. So I'm going to go into key and up and we're going to adjust the timbre and we're going to set that to 100%. So if we go down. Cool, now we've got that mapped to the keyboard. I'm going to actually change the delay of each of the samples. So when you play a low note, it'll be quite a longer sound. If we play a high note, we'll get that sort of hi-hat sound. And the way we're going to do that, similar how we set up the key up, we're going to use that to control the delay. So first of all, I'm going to make a generic sort of percussive sound. <coughs> So it would be our snare sound and then what I'm going to do is go and allow us to change that so we've got access to that now and then using what we've assigned to the decay we can add I think it's take there we go so if we play alone they're quite long and then if we go up we go hi-hat now if we bring all this together we can make a nice cool little strum beat using the sequencer. Now if you know the NES you know that there's a second way we can use the noise channel which creates a sort of buzzy tone. Now I had a bit of trouble making this on the microfreak but I feel I've got something that's really close. It does require a bit of programming but if we jump into the wave table and then set 8 and then we want it to sit around 64%. Now it's not super close, but it's definitely usable. And the last channel, which is the sample channel. And yeah, sadly the microfreak is not a sampler. It would have been cool, but I really feel they did well on this machine. However, there is one sound I really want to touch on with the sample itself. Now, if you ever heard of the company Sunsoft, they have a really incredible way of dealing with the sample channel. So if we listen to... Also, we can listen to... you'll notice that they use the sample channel as a baseline as well. And I thought they did it in FM, so I set up an FM patch on here. However, looking a bit further into it, it was done by a Kai SK7000, which is the bass sound that they pulled across. So I thought, well, why not? I've already set up a patch that does that sort of bass sound. Why not include it in the patch? Now, you will find all these patches down below. Just got to learn how to get them out of the microfreak and onto my computer. So yeah, you'll definitely see that pop up on Gumroad for you to download. Now, with all these channels laid out, I thought let's bring it all together and make a track with one of those old retro games. So I pulled a song from on the car and I've got it loaded into Famitracker. Now, if you ever wanted to get in the chip tunes, Famitracker is definitely one of the ways you can get into it. I'd highly recommend downloading it. And yeah, I've got one of the channels feeding into my mini log and then I'm just going to play a little session here.
Now, I hope there's a little bit of inspiration in this video for you as I really did enjoy making this one. The Nintendo has been quite the inspiration for me and really was the start to my music journey. Now, don't say that this video is telling you this is only really good to make NES style bleep bloops. There's a whole bunch of other consoles we can draw on and they have their own flavor and characteristics. So definitely have a look to your past, see what sort of old consoles or old computers that you've used learn how they made their tones and then see how you can apply it to the microfreak. You'll be really surprised at what sort of sounds you come up with. Now, if you really did enjoy this video, give it a thumbs up. It just gives me a bit of direction on where to take these videos and which synthesizers to pick on next. And yeah, if you had any sort of questions or queries about the microfreak, feel free to leave them down below. I'm really keen to chat about how I made the sounds or sound design or how we make the noises. It just is really fun to have that bit of collaboration down in the comments. And yeah, see how you can use chip tunes in your next track. See if you can make your Micro Freak do some really cool things for you. And I really hope to see you next time.